and welcome to No Such Thing as a Bad Movie Podcast. I'm April Atmansky, and I'm here today with... Jim Maxwell. <laughs> and... Wait, Jim? Wait, is that you? Yes, it is, Colin. Wait, it's take me, off take, a, take off that fake beard. No, <laughs> it's me, Justin. Justin, oh, God damn it. Mm-hmm. Colin, what are you doing? We need that Maxwell boost. <laughs> oh, man, I was like slamming Justin to, the, to Jim the entire screening. <laughs> so Justin's back. How was Tiff? Uh, it was good. Let's move on. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> now, nobody wants to hear somebody talk about how much fun they had at a film festival. Do I, when it came, what was your favorite movie at TIFF? Definitely The Sandman and Uncut Gems. Uh, Uncut Gems. Did I you know the Lighthouse? The Sandman. Oh, I did. I love The Lighthouse. Uh, the Lighthouse is the wait. way I've been describing it. Is, did you like The Witch? Mm-hmm. Did you ever go, I wish The Witch had all that stuff, but like injected with adrenaline and also kind of a joke and makes yeah. fun of itself. Yes. That's exactly what The Lighthouse is. It's uh, hilarious. It's a flat-out comedy. It looks great. The trailer looks great. All the trailers I've seen look yes. great. Yes, and they're very indicative of what the actual film awesome. is. Awesome, that's great. But forget um, about those good movies. Uh, um, this week we... Uh, <laughs> God damn it. Uh, wa- Other TIFF winner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. An- another TIFF winner. This week we watched the 10th Friday the 13th movie, Jason mm. X... About Jason in space. Yeah, that won the uh, was it the Palm Door? Or yes, the Palm Door. <laughs> or the it audience was between award. the Joker and uh, <laughs> yeah. Jason X. Actually, that's the Ven- uh, Venice. I always say Venice. I'm like, that's not Venice. a word. Venice. I guess it's French. That's why I go for it. So Venice this movie, Film Festival. This movie came out um, what, like mid 2000s? Well, I think it came out what 2001. Yeah, I oh. recall with great clarity. Yeah. being in. I must have been seventh or eighth grade. Yeah. And there'd be a newspaper that everybody would pass around and reading the review in the Ottawa Citizen and got <laughs> one and a half stars. Ouch. Well, I, I remember working on this movie in 1999. <laughs> ah, Grandpa. So I don't, uh, uh, I don't know what this 2001. Yeah, this film, we finished it. Uh, well, we'll talk more about it. But, mm-hmm. you know, it sat on the shelf for a few years before mm-hmm. it came out. Because uh, they, yeah. whole, they were whole waiting for the right time to release it. <laughs> uh, I they, mean, it's weird, like, Friday the 13th, the way that the studios don't know what to do with a very simple franchise. Like, yeah. I don't know if you guys heard, but I don't remember who had the rights, but they lost them because they didn't make a movie. Yeah, it's like, it's up in the air right now, and I remember the Friday the 13th video game just came out. Mm. Well, not just came out. It was a few years ago, yeah. but that got... Uh, I don't know what happened, but they were supposed to release all these new episodes mm-hmm. oh, or, or yeah. like camps, so camp maps. W- what happened is that um, the writer of the first Friday the 13th film, I don't right. remember what his name is, he owns the rights to the name and some of the iconography, but he doesn't own the rights to Jason. Right, which is Sean S. Cunningham. Which does. is Sean S. Cunningham. So the fight right now is like, what can you use from the other movies right. that wasn't originated in that first one? Okay. And that means it's a no man's land right now. Right, so Sean S. Cunningham, that's why this is called Jason X. I don't think they were allowed to use the Friday the 13th. Yeah, I believe yeah. it's because it's a new line picture so right. after um friday the 13th uh, jason goat takes a boat jason goes to hell jason, jason goes to vancouver yeah jason goes to vancouver <laughs> it takes manhattan yeah he actually uh it reverted to new line and that they made jason goes to hell which i believe is also why it's very like kind of shakily related to friday the 13th uh, okay they have to dance around mm-hmm. what they can name but hey he the... already went to hell in the previous movie am i right that was the Previous. previous movie. <laughs> I don't when he previous. went to New York. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, April was uh, looking at us like oh, that was a big leap we had to make. Right, I'm putting a slide whistle in there and <laughs> moving are you? on. Oh, man. <laughs> and you're gonna cut out the extended silence of me and Colin just staring at you. Yeah. I mean, I actually like Jason Takes Manhattan. What, where, where do you guys stand on Friday the Thirteenth movies? Well, it's funny because last was it last year. Yeah, I think so. Um, a bunch October. of them came out on Netflix and Shudder, and I had only ever seen the first one. So over like October, and then I think into November, like you know, a couple times a week, we would watch one, and I got to see the good ones and the bad ones, and I I was really like into it for a while, and yeah. then we stopped short of Jason X. We didn't get to Jason X. Yeah, I think <laughs> we watched from four to nine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so you skip the like because like the one two three is the oh, core. Look, I know them all. I was yeah, obsessed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Where were you obsessed? As okay. as a kid, I was obsessed with the Friday the Thirteenth franchise. You were like a Corey Feldman, like I, shaving your head. Yeah, I, like, I just could not get enough of these. I remember. Uh, I can't remember which one it was. It was four, I think. Um, mm-hmm. four or five that my parents rented me for my birthday and I was like way too young and I had all my friends mm-hmm. over and it was just I was dying for this movie mm-hmm. oh I love these films so much really yeah. so when you got 
the chance to work on Jason X were you like, oh boy. Couldn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, you're all jaded. You're like, no, I don't... So you were never a Freddy boy? You were always, ooh, that sounds gross. You Considering know, he's a child molester. Uh, I liked yeah. the first Friday, th- or, sorry, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember the first one I watched and I loved it. And then I uh, was c- talking to my cousin, tell me, telling him how great this movie is. And then we went to the video store and they only had two. So I'm like, God, just rent it. I'm sure it's amazing. And then we watched two and it was like, what the fuck are we watching? I mean, two is an amazing uh, film about a gay man struggling with his own homosexuality. Yeah, and we, it's not even like subtle in any way. No, we didn't get that at the time. We were too, <laughs> we were too young. I think yeah. it's in more retrospect. People have kind of reclaimed that. Yeah. as like, oh, it's actually trying to say something. But at the time, it's not what the fans wanted. And the director yeah. was like, well, that's not what I meant. Like yeah, Jack Shoulder, exactly. like the yeah. very serious director of like The Hidden. And uh, what else did Jack Shoulder direct? Lots of crap. Alone yeah. in the Dark, not the UV Bowl one. Oh, God. Well, uh, back to the Friday the 13th. Um, what was it? I think it was... Uh, hold on. I don't know what number, but are you talking Sorry. about the one where they go to summer camp? Because that was the <laughs> best one. <laughs> the um, one where they go to summer camp? <laughs> Sorry. You mean every one of I them? I mean the one where there's they go back. At, uh, no, they it go was, back to summer camp. <laughs> no, it was the ambulance driver is actually... Uh, the paramedic is actually the one killing Oh, that's him. part five. Yeah. And that's Roy? Jason... We, oh, oh, what is it called? Rob or something? Roy. Yeah. Roy, 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 that's Roy, right. Yeah. yeah, I love part five, and I love part five. We only love be- that the best because of awesome. because that's the one that feels the most nakedly like a gracious slasher film. And you know why that is? Because mm-hmm. the director was a porno director before he made that. Oh, uh, there yeah, you go. That one was fun. And supposedly, like the uncut version, which has never been seen, is like super gruesome. So like oh, okay. he treated the kills as like essentially climax. That was great. We enjoyed that one. Mm-hmm. The worst one, I think, by far, was Takes Manhattan. I, I feel like that had some good parts in it. Like the boat stuff, like take away the whole Manhattan thing altogether. And I feel well, like it should have. Like, yeah. That, so the movie is five minutes shorter. <laughs> like, exactly. But I, I mean, I, some of the stuff on the boat was okay. I, I, think. I actually put off Manhattan for a long time when yeah. I finally watched it. I actually really enjoyed it. I like that Jason teleports all over the place. <laughs> and the director even said like, yeah, I just wanted to do that. I mean, my favorite one is definitely part six. Yeah. Uh, Jason lives where he gets struck by lightning and comes back. Oh, that's Because right, that's yeah. the one that's a joke. And if you hear the director, director talk about it yes she approached it like as a fan of the franchise like i want to see um stuff that you wouldn't see so there's like kids at the that, campground that's the one i'm talking about which oh, you never okay. saw them uh before like he wants to bring characters back wait was it the, the psychic battle one? no no no, no, no that's no. part that's seven a, jason, oh, okay. that's <laughs> jason the new blood i believe okay versus carrie that one was yeah bad. that's the one versus yeah. carrie. this is the one where tommy jarvis he's in jail for like a lot yeah, for, of the movie yeah. for most of the movie yeah. and that's the one that has like the kids and they're reading like sarts no exit and it's like <laughs> what did you want to be uh, what did you want to be when you grew up <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus! Yep, that one's a really fun one. Uh, and I mean, people love Part Four. They love Part. Is that the four. one with Crispin Glover yes. dancing? People forget we hated that, that Part movie. Four has fifty minutes where nothing yeah. happened, yeah, and they essentially just go to sleep. That was the one we hated the most because mm-hmm. it was hyped up so much. You know, it's wow. a controversial opinion. What me and you have? I think everybody just everyone's like, "What are you thinking?" And they just like post that Crispin Glover dancing mm-hmm. uh, like GIF on and my hey, like, Twitter. And I love Crispin Glover, but even he wasn't. He couldn't say this it's movie. Like, yeah, that. 10 second moment is great and they because like the a woman spends sucks. a lot of time just on a raft on the water yeah it's, and people remember jason takes a thing to the head and like slides down the machete at yeah the end. that's great it's great. fantastic yeah just give me that moment that 20 seconds of that movie <laughs> yeah. is great so i'm glad that we can talk about the one that's the greatest <laughs> jason goes to hell <laughs> <laughs> that's have like, you seen jason goes to yeah, yeah you guys did i yeah. like that one a lot it's it, fun it, it was interesting it, it yeah. was uh, different i'll give yes, it that it is. As, yeah it's I mean, different from the other speaking movies. of jack shoulder he's the one who directed the hidden which has the same plot as jason goes to hell which oh, is the yeah, boat that right. goes into people's mouths yeah and, like, yeah possesses them Ew. <laughs> uh and no we watched jason x jason goes to space <laughs> yeah you had to go somewhere and the, it, i'm surprised they didn't do like jason in the arctic um, they went straight to space. It was going to be, well, first I have to tell the story. Was it going to be in the Arctic? Uh, it was going to be in the Arctic. So. I mean, oh. Jason was going to be everywhere. Like, these yeah. franchises are famous for having, like, 30 different drafts written. Yeah, they hmm. didn't know what to do, basically. Well, I have to say, like, the company that I uh, worked for at the time did all the effects for this movie and the uh, digital intermediate, which is called DI, which is very common now when movies are scanned in. <laughs> in their if they entirety. shoot on film. And they shoot on film, they're scanned in digitally so they can be color correct. Uh, you know, and edited and worked on mm-hmm. 
posted like now like pretty much all movies are done pretty much everything is if the movie is you know shot shot on film film. Uh, but everything is worked on digitally now at the time it wasn't and uh this was as far as i know uh was done before oh brother where art thou that's Mm -hmm. that's the one that's credited as the first movie that uh was entirely di'd um but because jason x sat on the shelf do you know why it sat on the shelf for so long i I don't know maybe it was a rights thing you know like we were talking about earlier no they never would have been able to make the movie it was but it was it was something and i I can't remember what i don't think it was an important thing it was just Mm -hmm. sort of a waiting for the right time i guess i don't know gotta release this for christmas oh you gotta (laughs) dump it in like january or something yeah the dumping ground i mean that's where like these jason movies friday the 13th should live is like they make one Every two years, yeah. mm-hmm. they get yeah. some young, hungry filmmaker to make it. Jason's on a boat. Jason, I mean, I, sure, he's already yeah. on a boat. Uh, I don't know. Where could Jason go? That would be fun. To Hawaii. Yeah. Hawaii! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He can make yeah. it like a beach blanket bingo. And or he can, like he can yeah. face off against Jack Frost. Like yeah, Jack you got to get Jack Frost. You got you to mix it up, you know, but and instead, try new things. I think they think too hard about it. I think so. And I, I think, like, uh, was it Freddy versus Jason was sort of being hung up? It was in, like, development hell at the time. Yes. And Sean Cunningham wanted to keep the brand alive. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So he's like, all right, we got to make, like, a Jason movie just to make a Jason movie just so like you know he's still in the public's minds or something like that did you guys ever hear about the script that was written by the guy who uh, was the showrunner on Battlestar Galactica the Freddy vs. Jason one uh, Ron Ronald Moore? D. Moore yeah he wrote mm-hmm. one where like I think it's Jason is real and it's the real world and it's like the O.J. Simpson trial <laughs> And like in that universe, Friday the Thirteenth movie exists, and he's put on trial. Mm. And it's like the classic example of people that don't want to make these kinds of movies. And I mean, that defines <laughs> most of these franchises. Yeah, is like people like Shaunus Cunningham were like, "Fuck, like, I don't want to make horror films, but yeah, I guess yeah. I will because this is what are, are making money." And I tried the kind of like really hardcore stuff. <laughs> exactly, no you more. Should, he apparently, has an amazing house with a tennis court. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was, I was, I became good friends with his son Noel on the shoot. No relation. It's so weird. So my dad's name is Sean Cunningham. That's right. A-N. And my brother's name is Noel Cunningham. Huh. So, wait, so a, you, another Sean and another Noel. Wait, yeah. you, be, you were friends with his, with his son? Did his son, did he write Jason Goes to Hell? I don't think so, no. Because family members wrote Jason Goes to Hell. Uh, I don't think it was him, no. Oh, no, it wasn't him. Okay. He played one of the campers in the earlier movies. I, mm. I was trying to pick him out in one of the movies. But, but he we, was working on Jason X, he right? He was the executive Noel? producer. Right. So he was like the kind of guy on set every day. And, the, and then we just became really good friends. We just hang out all the time. And So you were on set most of the time? Um, uh, I wasn't on set at all, so I was working on a film called The Cell at the time. Ooh, great movie. Yeah, it was in 1999, and uh, they had been working on Jason X for the entire time that I was working on The Cell, and I, it looked like hot garbage. Mm-hmm. What, Jason X? Oh, Jason X. looked terrible, and I did not want anything to do with it, and as soon as The Cell was done, I got dragged onto the Jason X team, and I was like, oh, fuck. See, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know, I really enjoy this movie, and I know yeah. you guys didn't that much, especially Colin. When I brought up, he was like, rrr, rrr. I was. Ex- yeah, yeah. I don't know what I was expecting, but yeah, what were you guys expecting? I, I've, I've seen it before. No, I know you have. But April. <laughs> well, I feel like it was like the tone was too goofy. Oh, it was, it's a very goofy tone. <laughs> you know, and like it's like we're on space, so we gotta have horny teenagers. But mm-hmm. like it's the future, and all of these people who are running the space station look like they just came from a rave in the nineties, <laughs> yeah. and they're acting they like they, they came do. from a rave, everyone's and stressed. everyone is just so stupid. And I, I get it, like that's the archetype of characters that are mm-hmm. in these movies. But I just feel like it didn't work in space. So I mean, my big issue with Jason X is that I mean, not to insult the digitally intermediate, oh, work, I don't care. is it looks super cheap. It looks yeah, like it looks and, like Canadian yeah, TV. Yeah, like there's a look yeah. of Canadian television. Yeah, and Jason X. Look, I actually went on IMDb. I'm like, did they shoot yeah. this on film? Oh, yeah, two thousand one. Yeah, they, they, they did. And it's all Canadian cast mm. um, because I believe Shot. they wanted to save money. Yeah. Which understandable, mm. but Canadian mm. actors also sometimes also have that quality where you can tell. Yes. They, <laughs> yeah, there's a cheapness to it, and especially I don't know if it's just because I'm Canadian that I react so badly to that Canadian. Really? of things like this was shot in Toronto and it just feels Canadian and mm, I don't know how to does. I don't know how to describe it to people you, that aren't from you can Canada. see a trailer 
And within like 20 seconds, you're like, that's yeah. Canadian. Yeah, it's so Is there just like one guy who does all the color timing? And just, <laughs> no, like, it's, it's yeah. not like necessarily a look thing mm-hmm. or it's a, a sound feel. thing or a music it thing. It is a feel. It's the combination of all the things. And I yeah. think uh, this one, especially a big thing, was the score. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> Very <how> chintzy. <laughs> awful the score was. And I remember, yes. uh, I remember seeing an early cut of the movie. Like it was kind of around the office and we'd watch it and they had a the temp score. Mm-hmm. And it was actually kind of kind of good we're like, like operatic no it just like was i don't know it music just, from other movies like they, they yeah, usually wait, do was yeah. it scored by the guy who did every jason film yeah he is a hack he's it, like it, a famous i hack. forget his name like yeah. henry Man- mancini i believe uh, no not no, henry no, no. mancini <laughs> <laughs> henry mancini the famous uh, musician yeah no i don't remember but the score was just like it's like it just sounds like stock music. It's low like rent th- stock that you've heard a bajillion yes. times. Yeah, and it doesn't really go to anything that's on screen. This is very generic sounding. Yeah, and, and the, the stings. It's like dunna, yeah. Nah, nah, so, nah. And I remember, I remember when we watched the earlier cut of the movie. I'm like, oh, this is kind of enjoyable. It'll be mm-hmm. really good once the effects are done and once the final score is done. I remember Noel telling me, oh yeah, we got the final score today. Blah blah blah. And then we all watched the movie and it was so much worse with the score. Mm-hmm. It made the movie worse. So oh, like yeah. this movie gives me everything I want <laughs> from the 10th entry of a franchise that takes place in space. Yeah. The writer, Todd Farmer, mm-hmm. uh, he said he's a big Jason fan. It gives you all yeah. that stuff. Jason is just murdering people left and right. Yeah, Todd he's, Farmer also in the movie. Yeah, he yes. is as one of the um, goo, uh, one of the guys playing the video game, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, there's just a bunch of disposable characters enough that I could kind of tell them apart. Kind uh, of, yeah. but a lot of them look look too similar yeah they did yeah. and but the, and this is also on the cusp of we use cg effects yeah but we'll also crash two miniatures together yeah, that's right. to have stuff explode well, the and, whole yeah the whole grendel ship yeah uh, which is the yellow ship uh was a model and that there's all the gore is practical as well yeah because i think uh, a, uh, no, a little, there, some of it there was some really bad cgi no mm-hmm. you're thinking of when they play the video game the guy gets cut in yes, half yes but remember <laughs> at the very beginning where jason's his, his his hand just falls he's still frozen and he cuts the guy's arm off oh, i'm as pretty as sure as that was a cgi <laughs> that was a cgi arm and then yeah. the, the, when the guy gets cut in half and he's dragging himself yeah. along that was cgi yeah, that was okay though that's i thought right. it, it was okay i mean uh, that's and, like again that's cg um what is it? Not accentuating. Uh, uh, not amplifying. I can't think of the right word. Oh, fuck. Yeah, now it's on the tip of our tongue. I just tongue. used it on set today, and I can't think of the word. <laughs> You're saying augmented. it makes it augmented. Augmented. Oh, That's augmented. what it is. Yeah. Yeah. A, a special effect, as opposed to it being the special exactly, effect. Exactly, yeah. So the guy had like a green stocking, you mm-hmm. know. And, uh, I like the, the screw effect when the guy gets impaled on the screw, and he yeah, kind of ra- <laughs> rotates down. That was what actually ha- funny. What happened to Jim? <laughs> he got screwed. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> the corny the the I jumped to my feet, and I Well, that's the thing. It's like all these things should work. But it's mm-hmm. something about the Canadianness of it. Is just it. I agree. Nothing. See, I, in a movie like, say, the next movie we watched, I would enjoy a punny line like this. Mm-hmm. In this one, I, I was annoyed by it. Yeah. Could have could have been the mood it's I was the Canadian in. Canadian factor. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but that's all almost a little bit of like, hmm, well, they should have known better. If no, you know what I, I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's just like watching a movie and you see like a TTC car go by in the, in the <laughs> background, which is like the Toronto oh, like streetcars. Also, no. like, maybe like, the oh. reason that like this movie like has that effect on us is because we grew up watching TV and like clicking by all these terrible Canadian um, shows like yeah. um, Relic Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> and Don't you be smirch, Relic Andromeda. Hunter. Um, Andromeda. Um, you're going to shit on Lex. No. <laughs> um, what's another one? <laughs> Actually, oh, so, to, so much shit. Uh, uh, Beast, two of the Be- girls, Beastmaster? two of the girls in this movie are from Andromeda. That's mm-hmm. right, which yeah. is weird. Which was also, I guess, shot in Toronto. Mm-hmm. I guess, yeah. Uh, just that Canadianness of it. You could almost get it confused. You know what? Those New Zealand, like um, Xena, Hercules, and Cleopatra, they kind of yeah. have, they have that a little bit too. It's, it's like a, Sunday afternoon it's their action own, adventure. It's their own identity. Though. There's just no like. Cleopatra style visually, and it has a style. It's just it, it it's kind of bland. It's very bland. It and is generic. very bland. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this was directed by I'm going to get his Isaac. What's his first name? Jim Isaac. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace, because I know he passed away a few years He's ago. Very, very, very nice guy. Yeah, and uh, he was the special effects guy yeah. on a David Cronenberg film, which is why uh, Davy Cronenberg shows up early in this film to get impaled by Jason. So yeah. a film that we worked on before that called Existence. Uh, <gasps> Great Just movie. watched it two days ago. Jim had puppeteered. There's a scene, they're at a gas station and a little kind of creepy crawly thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like a, I don't know, a two-headed lizard Didn't or something. did they augment it with CGI afterwards? Yeah, so it was originally a rod puppet. Mm. It had been puppeteered, and I think Jim puppeteered it, and I think it ended up just being replaced. We, yeah, I think it was replaced. Uh, CG. Yeah. It didn't, it didn't 
didn't look very well. We were originally supposed to just remove the rods. Mm -hmm. And then he also worked on uh, the original Gremlins. He was a puppeteer on the Gremlins in the... uh, Chris Isaac? No, no, Chris Isaac. Jim Isaac. (laughs) Jim. (laughs) Yeah, no, what was the name? It's Chris Wallace was the special effects guy on uh, Gremlins. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, Yeah. so Jim, I think, was a puppeteer, and he did the... Mm -hmm. uh, There's like a movie theater scene where they're all like in there. He was like... And then watching like um, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Yeah, he may have worked on... uh, like the fly or something like that too. Well, that was a Chris Wallace joint, the fly yeah, too. That's uh, right. The one was Eric Stoltz. Yeah. So he was good friends with uh, uh, David Cronenberg. Mm-hmm. So. Do we need to give a brief synopsis of this movie? Okay. So Jason has been <laughs> captured and then a woman who I don't remember her name, but Lex- there's so oh, many people in I this. I remember that. the actress's she's a, name. She has a funny name. Uh, what's her name in the movie? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I was going to say that everybody kind of looks like somebody else in this movie. I'm like, yeah. is that Olivia Wilde? Yeah. Check That's IMDb. Right. Yeah, yeah. She was no. like yeah. too young at that okay. time. What's her? What's that actress's name? Lexa Doig. <laughs> Lexa Doig? Lexa Doig. Doig. <laughs> and we kept saying that through she, the entire movie. And she and Jason get frozen. In um, a there's cryo a, there's chamber. There's a mishap. David Cronenberg is killed. Yeah, that's killed. right. Oh, the classic like, hey, wait, Jason's just in this giant bare room under a sheet. Oh, no, he's not under the sheet. He's hiding. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they're like, we got to save him because he can regenerate faster than any human. Oh, I yeah. love this. Every military organization is always like, we have to save this unkillable killing machine. Yeah, which is terrible. It's like, don't bring yeah. science into the Jason Friday the 13th movies. And then they both get frozen and yeah. they wake up in the future. Uh, it's like 400 years yeah, it's later. Like 25 so, yeah. Something. yeah. And it's like a class of archaeologists, I believe. I think so, yeah. I, they with, don't look like archaeologists. Which was a teacher who's in deep debt. He's like, <laughs> I need Jason to be able to pay stuff off. Oh, the yeah. sex pervert teacher. <laughs> yeah. But they're Loves all. To get his nipples clamped. They're all all horny they're all yep. um having relations um <laughs> having relations. relations one of the one of the students comes into his room you mm. know to kind of bribe him into giving her a good grade oh, okay. and she has a bottle of champagne and uh, clamps yeah and there, then, there are no grades these are adults they're not in school so this this was <laughs> a reference a no it's a class this, this was a reference to jason takes manhattan right N- didn't no. this happen in jason takes manhattan no I, I remember, students. there was a, there was a teacher on the boat no no, no. No, they're a student that. because the student says, I need you to change my midterm. Yeah, I thought like, that was a reference. No. <laughs> Guys, tweet she... at me if this is a reference. <laughs> so anyway, did she you, comes in did with Did you plans. take Benadryl again, April? <laughs> no. <laughs> she comes in with, with uh, I was going to say with Benadryl, with, sh- <laughs> bottle of cham- with a bottle of champagne and clamps. <laughs> and clamps. And then April goes, <laughs> What are the clamps for? What, just one big clamp, <laughs> and, actually. And then Colin's like, uh, that's how they open champagne in the future, April. <laughs> I said, just, just wait for it. Then he's getting his nipples tweaked, and then he yells out, you pass. To be honest, it's not even like nipple clamps. It's like that thing you use to take logs out of the fireplace. <laughs> It's true. Um, it are those just called tongs? Fireplace yeah, tongs? Yeah, fire fireplace tongs. <laughs> That's what they use in the future, I guess. They got big ones. Um, and and okay. then, uh oh, Jason comes back alive and does one of the best kills in the movie where he it's freezes good, a woman's yeah. face. This is actually done pretty well. Yeah. I don't. It's 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 a successful kind of uh, mm. practical CG. It's gag. the thing about this movie is that there's some effects some are great kills. and some look terrible and. Probably just because there's so many, they can't all be great. Like, they mm. don't have the budget for that. Here's the thing. A lot of these Friday the 13th movies, they're really fucking boring. They're so boring. <laughs> yes. uh, Friday the 13th Part 2 literally has the cast go to a bar for most of the movie and then come back at the end to find all the people murdered and then get chased by Jason. It's a good thing I missed that one. Man, I haven't seen that in so long. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Friday the 13th Part 3 is the, the, the good one because that's like, hey, look, I found this yo-yo. Whoa. Here, catch. 3D. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, the... Th- Set two and three weren't on streaming when we were watching them last yeah, year, but then the four gives you a recap of the first three movies. <laughs> it does. You get all so the kills. So it's like, oh, I, I got it. Like the guy doing the handstand and yeah. then Jason cuts him in half. <laughs> oh. Previously on Friday the 13th. 13th. So Jason just, you know, he makes mincemeat out of all the kids that are on the spaceship. One by one. Yeah. Uh, okay. I didn't realize they were kids. That would explain why um, they're all wearing rave outfits. They're not uh, kids. They're adults. Well, they're played, <laughs> yeah, they're let's be played by adults. But there's also a robot character. Can't forget her. K.M. 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 Who just wants to have, as April would say, it, relations. <laughs> yeah. There's a scene at the beginning where she's like exposing her chest and then like her nipples fall off. <laughs> well, the, guy, the guy's fitting her with nipples. Yeah. yeah. Her creator. And she's like, I want boobs. Yeah. Ba- yeah. Basically. I just want to be, she wants to be human. That's right. She's but like, she's not going to be human. She's going to become super robot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I mean, the only other plot point really 
really is that um, they have this um, nano um, na- nanite technology. Yeah, it's like a healing bed that you sit down mm-hmm. and all these like nanites come out and will you know heal heal your yeah. wounds. Uh oh, I hope Jason doesn't <laughs> land on that bed at the end and I something didn't, happens. Didn't see that one coming. <laughs> I mean, you did if you looked at the poster of the film. Yeah, it's where true. you have half Jason. Oh, that's right. And half. I don't know what he's known it's as. It's Uber Jason. Is it Uber Jason? Yeah, it's Uber Jason. Okay. We always refer to him as Uber Jason. We had a full body cast of Kane Hodder in mm. the uh, uh, the CG area for the entire thing. So it was just like leaned <laughs> up against, which is really the weird. CG area, I'm like, the, the, like the unmentionable area? <laughs> no, <laughs> the CG area of the building. Oh, yeah, no, okay. it's the computer graphics department. Oh, so yeah. like where the holograms are. Hope yeah, they we, don't become real. We had this full body cast of like Kane, mm. Kane Hodder. Now, was that just because like... Uh, they were done with it and they were like, here, let's put it here. Or did you guys actually was, need it? No, we built a CG because at the very end when Brodsky is fighting Jason as they enter the Earth's atmosphere, in the, in the, in it's space. a full CG Jason and Bronski, I think his name is. Brodsky. I think it, I think it's Brodsky. Brodsky, yeah. Maybe You're it's like, Brodsky. Is that Lance Reddick? Yeah. No, well, we did not. It, we it's basically did a CG Uber Jason. So we had to. Mm. We so you had to that. scan Yeah, that. we scanned it that's and like built cool. him. And blah, did blah, you build the Freddy head that like winks at the end? <laughs> no, that's a different movie. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your favorite part, April? Well, um, my favorite part uh, is actually a scene that uh, Colin worked on, which was uh, there's, a, there's a holodeck in this movie. And uh, it only shows up in two scenes. At the beginning, these two guys are like fighting aliens in it or something. And then uh, at the end, they use it to trick Jason. So they recreate Camp Crystal Lake. And it looked really good. But the part that I really liked was they, they're, he's like, I, I'll compute a distraction. And these two like topless like blonde or not blonde, but they're like teenagers show up. And it was really funny because it's like, okay, they're aware of the franchise and they're making fun of it. Mm. Like, unlike the we rest love. of the movie, which is just not, the t- I, feel like it, I feel like the tone didn't work. This was like, clearly like, they're poking fun at the fact that he hates fornicators <laughs> and yep. he'll kill them. And then he, he takes one and puts them in the sleeping bag and he keeps doing it again and again. And that's a reference to the earlier movie. It was yeah. funny. It and it's almost thought, like an American person did this joke. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what you wrote and shot and directed it. No, I'm just saying what part did you do of the scene? Uh, was the whole camp crystal lake. So basically the, the lake the, itself, right? <laughs> yeah. So it was basically just like a practical ground with leaves and stuff mm-hmm. and trees in the foreground. And then the back, background it was supposed to be like this hollow deck mm-hmm. kind of projection of camp crystal lake so i had to do this matte painting of crystal lake and i did the cg water so did you do the shot where like jason is looking and there's like clouds over his head no <laughs> no i did not okay. that was, that was cool that was somebody else at the company yeah. which i will not name oh but, okay uh, yeah and that was the only thing that i did and i'm listed in the credits as like the lead animator on the camp crystal lake sequence but hmm. it's yeah like, the credits are broken up by sequence which you never see in you'll never see now, now. Now because I guess you, yeah not unions it's the studios don't want to pay out on yeah because this was kind of like I don't want to say a co-production between Toy Box and the studio but it was mm-hmm. like you know Toy Box got heavily credited mm-hmm. In, mm-hmm. in the end so it was like broken up into sequence people are credited twice and stuff like that it was like whoa like the way it should be the way it should be but yeah. you don't see anymore because mm-hmm. like you know 5,000 VFX artists are credited at the end yeah and I mean that's the way it works now it's not just like one person does a whole sequence you have a team of people or one person will do one shot or two studios yeah, will do the yeah, same scene like and yeah, it's, uh, yeah. so what's your favorite scene Colin the Camp <laughs> Crystal Lake scene oh, <laughs> or your God. favorite element yeah uh, I gotta say like the liquid night nitrogen kill at the yeah. beginning and i think that's one of the best kills uh i would say in the franchise like i really like it it's, there's a, it's there's just a lot of good ones but that one's up there I it's really good and it's it's kind of surprising and you know first of all it's, it's the double whammy it's like he freezes her face and you're like wow she's dead and then smash yeah and, and then, then he yeah holds up and then he holds up the head the and head. Yeah, it's just all the kind of blood crystals like falling out of her it's face so it's so fast really cool. it's like just like whoa it takes you off guard yeah you know? that's a good one i like that i mean and I like the screw, the screw, the screw gag. Well. Yeah, the <laughs> way a, he falls down. It's very funny. It, yeah, it slides I'm, around. There's a lot that I love in this movie because it's pure entertainment. But and I want to say like, oh, my favorite part is the it suddenly turns to aliens out of nowhere. Yeah, it does. Yeah. But I want to save that for when we watch Leprechaun Four in space, <laughs> which also turns into aliens. Wait, so Hellraiser goes to space as well, isn't it? Mm, okay, well, Hellraiser does go to space, but it's part of an omnibus film, oh. and that's like the last part of that omnibus so in Hellraiser not Four. Like the whole, it's the, not the whole movie, but you do see a, a robot. Uh, 
uh, I can't remember what the name of the cube is. The puzzle box? No, oh. it's, it's called, it has um, the lament configuration. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and then that's the robot does it like a Rubik's Cube and then explodes it's like, in the no! first scene. Yeah. yeah. But that's, those are other spaces. I see, okay. Uh, I really... So this is something that's like really underrated in slasher films and something that people don't understand is that like it's fun to see competent people go up against like slasher characters. Yeah. So like when the uh, robot lady blows Jason away. <laughs> yeah, and, like, she was his, good. His arms and legs are, are yeah. shot off. That's so much fun. And then, of course, Jason's going to come back as, I don't, I mean, Uber Jason's not cool. Uh, no, it'd it be looks, cool if he had like machine gun or like chainsaw hands. Or it something looks terrible. Like that. It is like his 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 mask gets upgraded. <laughs> yeah. The nanites can make his mask metal. Yeah, yeah. that's right. But just half like a laser pointer on a sword, <laughs> like at the end of Versus. Like, <laughs> that would like, be great. Next. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I think that like competence at the end, even though that because the ending is so long. Mm-hmm. That, like, it kind of ends with a whimper. It's like, eh, it's over. Jason gets shot out of an airlock. Yeah, that's it right. It keeps going and going, though. Yeah. It's like they have to get to the other ship, and then mm-hmm. he's floating in space, and then the girl's head falls off, and the girl and, gets sucked out of the airlock. And lock. again, this is where the score just fails the movie. Mm-hmm. Like, And by the time it gets to the, it's like the couple on the new Earth, like Earth 2, and they yeah. see they I see the shooting star, that. and it's just, the score has pretty much just disappeared. And so it's just... <laughs> Hear me. And then the girl's getting uh, sucked out. She goes, this sucks on so many levels. <laughs> and, then, Shit, and then, so she gets sucked out, but we don't see it. She just like oh, moves I'm off screen. And then you just see like a six inch by six inch square of skin, like on the grate and it's bloody. And that's it. Just sort of flapping in the wind. Um, I wanted to just mention that the costumes in this movie are insane and not in a way I enjoyed. So I usually, I usually like crazy. <laughs> costumes but they are just it, like somebody was like trying to way too hard in the costume department because Ooh, I wonder if I know the person that this, this on was the 1999 and I have to say um, I was telling you when uh, KM gets upgraded yeah. this is right after the Matrix came out very reminiscent I would say oh she looks just like Trinity you know she's got the Trinity outfit yeah and, but the and, Andromeda version exactly it's the cheap Canadian version <laughs> all right well this was uh, the episode oh wait no we watched another movie Oh, Jesus. Yes, we watched another movie that was all Justin's idea, <sighs> and I'm so glad that he made us watch this movie. I'm glad we have someone to blame. So we have gone way <laughs> too easy on the movies that we've been watching lately. Like we've been, I, I mean, I love doing themed episodes, but I think that we've been too like, oh yeah, it'll be two fun ones. That's not the idea of the podcast. The no, idea of the podcast was punishment. The very yeah. beginning, you said punishment. Yes. I, you know, I can't remember, it was like a few weeks ago, and I was thinking to myself, I'm like, yeah, like I remember Justin saying the second one was supposed to be punishing. Well, yes. we kind of we kind of dropped that, but I mean, if you look at like Doom and Doom Two, yeah. like you hated Doom Two, and also Doom was bad. It, but I just, I just <laughs> so it's wasn't, like which was the bad one in that episode? I wasn't in sync with the with the energy of Doom Two. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Doom, Doom is pretty. Sucked. Doom is punishing, but it doesn't. It's not pain like one of these. I, it, the, uh, the movie that we watched, which was called Killing Spree, is not shot on video. <laughs> But you could easily confuse it with a shot on video. Yeah, totally. The aesthetics are very yes. similar to that. The style. Well, especially the opening, uh, the opening credits mm-hmm. are like very video text generator So they're <laughs> yes. very aliased and pixelated. Yeah. So this is a movie directed and written by Tim Ritter, who most famously made Truth or Dare, A Critical Madness, which was his first film when he was eight. Actually, his second film when he was 18, because he made a film called Day of the Reaper. Let me put my nerd glasses on. Go. Tim Ritter information. Oh, no. This was his third film. I guess it was his attempt to do like an Evil Dead type stuff. You you're reading this all off the tattoo on your arm. Yeah, my Tim Ritter tattoo. <laughs> well, uh, Truth or Dare, um, uh, that was the first movie that you played at uh, your film series, right, Justin? Yeah, Laser Blast uh, Film Society like five years ago. So it, why why did you pick that as the inaugural film? I did not pick that one. That was uh, Peter Kaplowski who picked oh. that one. I think because he, he had seen it at Fantastic Fest. They had done a screening because oh. it's one of Elijah Wood's favorite movies. Really? Oh. Yeah, because he watched it when he was a kid. <laughs> and he's like, oh, whatever you want, uh, Elijah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll play it in Toronto, sure. Wait, why does Peter Kowalski sound like um, Woody Allen? Uh, but yeah, Truth or Dare is, I, I'm guessing, a little more well-known than Killing Spree, right? Yeah, Killing Spree is pretty I, well-known. I don't know if well-loved <laughs> is, is an example. I had heard of Truth or Dare mm. for years before this. I had never actually I have seen heard it, of neither. So yeah. Killing Spree is about, as per usual, we're just going to name them uh, <laughs> off of their actor's name. <laughs> 
Asbesto felt. No, asbestos As- felt. Asbestos felt. Asbestos which is, felt. I assumed, what his wig was made out of. <laughs> it is not a wig. I was so confused in the first shot of him because he has this, like, I don't know, shock of red hair. Mm-hmm. He looks like, I want to say, like a Scottish roadie. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. He's got this big, bushy red beard and crazy red hair. He also looks hair. like Wyatt Russell. He looks like a low-rent Wyatt Russell. Skinnier. Yeah, he looks like um, the, uh, what is the guy, the Dane DeHaan uh, is Leonardo DiCaprio. He's like the yeah. the, the, the Wyatt Russell version of <laughs> he's, that. He's yeah. like the Wyatt Russell impersonator that yeah, you like, hired. It's like the, cl- yeah. the, the clone that they like took out too early. It's out like, of the back. Missing like a few genomes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. didn't get all the nutrients that was supposed to get and like asbestos felt like you know how people make up fake names for yeah. movies that's the weirdest one i've ever heard it's like two completely different things it's i don't even get it so he plays a very misogynistic man uh yes. who wants his wife to stay home yeah he won't let her uh what, what he's like a he's like an airplane an technician airplane repairman but technician. it's like a this small is not like small like float planes not like mm. national airline yeah it's like little cessnas or something like that and he a very blue collar looking guy and then he comes <laughs> home to this house mm-hmm. and it's like some ikea house some 80s ikea nightmare it is the brightest house you have ever seen like it we is... were all like holding our hands in front of our eyes Eyes, so like white. Squinting. <laughs> There's no shadows at all in this house. It's like, <laughs> which is probably impressive because that means they use a lot of diffusion on those lights. No, no, no. they just shut. They just got the right angle because this is a movie that you definitely feel it's like an 18 or 19 year old directing it. He doesn't quite understand the grammar of film yet. He directed this when he was 18. 19? I believe he was 19. Yeah. Holy, oh, oh it's amazing. <laughs> That's a, well, you know what? a good movie then. Even better than I already thought. And I'm okay. not being sarcastic in that, people. This was, a, this was one of the, uh, probably one of my most fun screenings because Colin would go, ugh, so boring. And then okay. April would go, no, I love it. It's April amazing. was cracking up. Okay, I have to say, I, if I sound very tired when we're filming this, I woke up very, very early today. I woke to up at honest. the same time, Colin. <laughs> hey, <laughs> well, okay. one of you woke up on me, the wrong side of the bed. Let me, let me premise this by saying uh, I... I don't usually wake up this early today. Yeah, five thirty a.m. Yeah, and Ugh. for whatever reason, I was just in the right mood for this movie. Mm-hmm. So it's just like this really, really good low budget <laughs> slasher that There's has a lot of reallys in front of that good. <laughs> has an amazing soundtrack. Oh, it does. It has an amazing. I hope you guys like Led Zeppelin. I remember the song. You yeah. can save it to the end. Okay. Well, I no. <laughs> let's just sing it now because we want to sing it throughout with. Yeah. It's like a Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, like later Ozzy Osbourne wannabe song. Mm. Mm. It uh, there's, a se- there's a several songs. And we didn't even like, this film has almost no plot. It's basically uh, asbestos, fe- I can't say it. <laughs> Asbestos, asbestos, yeah. asbestos felt. felt um, thinks that his wife is cheating on him yeah. with all these like uh, repairmen, just like schlubby repairmen. Yeah, which made me ask Colin, was there a lot of repairmen when you were a kid? And I was surprised at the answer. Yes, you'd always have the repairmen come over, and I was explaining uh, when the TV repairman comes in this movie. I'm like, exact. That's what we had to do in our mm. CRT TV when I was a kid. Uh, you know, it stopped working. We had to call the repairman. He showed up in his van, his creepy van. Yep. <laughs> he took the you TV just away. You buy a new one. You have to get it fixed. Took the TV away for two weeks and gave us a loner. <laughs> and it was the shittiest, like, black and white piece of crap. Black and white? I was, it, this was the 80s, man. It was like, color was a luxury. That was the, that was the loner. <laughs> yeah, that was he the came, loner. He came with his horse and buggy and dropped <laughs> off the picture box. It's like when the knife sharpening man comes around your neighborhood and he's, <laughs> he's ringing the bell. I don't know if like Americans understand. But. Well, I'm surprised there wasn't like a milkman in this. Like, it's like that type of like, just every, the guy mows a lawn, um, electrician, what else? Uh, there was the, more. Yeah. The, oh, the, the package delivery man. The package delivery it, man? Yeah, yeah well, he was wearing it, the cowboy It, it starts with uh, this guy's best friend who looks like about 10 years or, or not older than him. And he looks also, like Philip Baker Hall kind from, of. Uh, from Boogie Nights. He works with him at the plane place and uh, he's like, he's got a thing for my wife, even though I don't think he does. He's banging some 18-year-old. Named Angel. <laughs> yeah, which is so yeah. gross. He's she, like, she just turned 18. Uh, yeah. And he looks like about 70. Yeah, so he suspects that he wants to bang his wife and he has this fantasy that they're together so he kills his young girl and 
him. Oh, you're skipping way too fast, yeah. And then, like, well, it's a, and then he goes in a killing spree. Because we, we have to say that the directorial style of this film is most people, when they're having conversations, are staring right down the camera lens. Yeah, so it's, like, it's like, hey, peep, peep how's it going? It's like peep show because it's like a fisheye lens almost. Yeah, there's like, like fisheye and you can see vignetting around the corner. Yeah, it's not yeah. like an intense fisheye. Like, mm-hmm. you know. It's not like Terry Gilliam fisheye. Yeah, but it's still fisheye. And um, asbestos just walks around very slowly worrying that his wife is cheating on him. He's like muttering to himself. He looks very angry. (laughs) He has a dream where uh, his wife's head is, uh, well, because she goes, I'm going to give you head. And then she turns into giant lips. Yeah. And like, and starts giving his boss's head a blowjob. That's like the only like surreal thing in the movie, which is weird. Like there's gore and and like crazy like um, effects later, but not like, I'm going to imagine my wife is a giant mouth. Uh, I mean, consistency is probably not Tim Ritter's strengths. No. <laughs> Especially at this point in his film. What are his career. strengths? Uh, colored lighting. Yeah, lighting. <laughs> yeah, I was say lots the, of colored lighting. Lots lighting. of red and blue lighting. Patience. That's one of his yeah. strengths. <laughs> when he's angry, he gets like all orange and then there's like an orange light on him too. No, no, it's not Tim Ritter. Yeah. No, I was <laughs> I was joking. Him too. Was, like somebody said, how do they make him look so orange? And I just said, they just shone a regular white light on him. Yeah. Well, okay, so I want to say what my favorite ginger. part of this film is. The tans. Everybody <laughs> the tans. has insane tans. And we were like, is it just the transfer or the lighting? But then there was a scene where Asbestos is wearing a little Speedo. It's a very upsetting scene, by the way. And you can see that like his tan just ends at the shorts area. Yeah. It's just pure white everywhere yeah, he's else. wearing the banana hammock. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it is, right. uh, it is we, leading nothing to the imagination. We thought it was a California film, but nope, Florida. So Asbestos is going around murdering all these repairmen because he thinks his wife is having an affair. And it's revealed pretty early on that she's not. She's just writing about it because she's doing romantic stories. Like in her journal. She's yeah. fantasizing about actually sleeping with these repairmen or whatever. Mm-hmm. But then, like, we see it. Like, it shows it. It shows her fan. Can you, and we're like, whoa, is she really doing it? No, she's just dreaming about it. But so it's like... The, uh, it was awkward because the actress has to simulate sex with all these gross guys. Um, and then later she, uh, we find out that she actually sold some stories to a uh, romance magazine. Well, what was that guy's name? Jerkler or something? Oh, yeah. No, but that wasn't it. But it was like... Jerkman some, or something jer- like that. <laughs> Mr. Jerk Jerkman? Yeah. <laughs> oh. But uh, and he like tries to come on to her and then she goes home and then we find out that they're zombies. Whoa, what? man, you're skipping through so much. <laughs> okay, she, no. Yeah, this movie Spoiler takes alert. This, this movie takes a turn in the last third. <laughs> yeah. A because turn, a turn for the better, but I think for me it was too little too late. Because this is a movie where like uh I think that momentum is not something on its mind. Oof. No. Because every scene you'll just watch the person do it slowly. Like yeah. you'll see like Asbestos, take the garbage out. Asbestos, yeah. uh, walk up some stairs. It's mostly him disposing of the bodies. To the music of... But why do we need a, like, a five-minute sequence of this? We don't. But the disposal scenes are always way longer than the killing scenes. Yeah, That's well, right. Or the setup scenes where he slowly and surely sharpens his machete yeah. and yeah. then attaches his machete to the ceiling fan. That was pretty good. Actually. Hey, both these movies had machetes. Well, they did. I forgot to mention that the machete in Jason X has like holes in it to make it like more aerodynamic. It's a future machete. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Wait, did that, uh, he took that from the doctor's office before he, uh, when he like froze her face and smashed it. Yeah. And then he kind of grabbed it from the tool kind of table. I was assuming maybe it was a bone cutting machete. Okay, it's like a future machete, but then did that get upgraded? I I forget. (laughs) Probably. Yeah, no, I think it's like a smoother, like shinier machete. Yeah, yeah. That's even the laser. The laser. Yeah, the laser point would be great. That'd be awesome. uh, but back to killing spree so he murders people in ways that is almost like you know like a splatter comedy kind it of it is but it's it's kind of disappointing sometimes like he talks to this guy that he's gonna run over with a lawnmower for like 10 minutes and you're like all right run him over with a lawnmower and you don't get to see it you you kind he you get to see his hands like his fingers chop off yeah, and then right. you see like a little bit of the head but like not really but like they could only do so much like, much like jason x 
There was a lot of effects in this movie. Mm-hmm. Some looked great, some not so good. Although I would say the effects in this were better than they were in Jason X, other than the scene you worked on, of course. Colin. <laughs> you don't have to say that. Um, it's not, like, it's not mean, great. I, I, I would disagree with that. I, I would disagree. I think, <laughs> yeah. I think this movie has way better kills. Uh, yeah. Um, but my favorite, I mean, I love this. I, everything about this movie. I could go on about this movie forever. I think everyone should watch it. Colin, your hate made her so strong. Everyone oh should watch God. it. But the thing that, I'm I mean, the oh, Benadryls God. when I, when I go back to bed. <laughs> well, uh, there's the thing that happened in the end credits that I'm assuming is going to be your favorite things. Uh, I did. Well, we'll mention it anyway, but my favorite thing is there's an, a nosy neighbor, an old lady in this movie, and in the beginning she comes over to borrow a laxative, which is weird. <laughs> in a it's, very long scene. As you do. And there's a yeah. funny scene where she's like, I've been watching you. I know you're killing people. Ugh. I'm going to report you to the neighborhood watch or maybe you could kill my husband and you really think that that's the way it's going and then he just he just stabs her in the face. No, he gets her uh, under the chin yeah. with, a, with a hammer. With like a and claw hammer. It's a full dummy that like he pulls it back. Uh, it looks so chin. good. But yeah. yeah. Good. <laughs> so when she comes back as a zombie, it's just a dummy and it's not even a dummy I think it's just a head and they covered it with a, like a, with a garbage, a garbage bag. bag and it's a very very funny look it's got a big eye that's just like always pointed at the camera it those are like so the dollar funny. store eyes you get during Halloween oh they're just like yeah. ping pong balls yeah ping pong balls with like an eye drawn <laughs> on very amusing yeah someone gets their guts ripped out uh, mm-hmm. someone gets a that's, that's the best thing okay well I gotta say it's like my favorite thing to is, the the, is the kills the kills mm-hmm. are yeah. by far the best thing about this movie um, the, the best one, I forget who it is, the TV guy who he kind of knocks out and then ties up in the basement and then gets a chainsaw. He cuts his belly open and then it's a very long scene of him pulling all of his intestines out. <laughs> very long. And you, you think, okay, this is it done. I must have been he, in the bathroom. Like, I think ties his intestine this. to like, I think a uh, part of the TV or something mm-hmm. and turns it on and then electrocutes him. I mean, and that goes on forever. As we, well. we thought that we're like, there's no, there's no payoff to him being electrocuted, but yeah. the body's just kind of jumping. It may be why that uh, character, when he comes <laughs> back at the end of the movie, goes full simple Jack. Yeah. He's talking. Is that something like that him. happens when you get electrocuted? You lose your ability to talk. No. He was talking like this. <laughs> April, come on. Um, but also <laughs> guy so- gates, a screwdriver, Right in the top of his skull, because he was the uh, asbestos was like painting. He was doing something on a ladder, and he April, just dropped. April it. had the best comment. She's like, Whew, "I wish life worked that way." And I was like, "Do you want to murder people?" I'm April? just telling you. She's it like, just "Colin dropped it perfectly, and it just it doesn't work that way. It would just. I, I think it, it maybe it would like go in, but it wouldn't like stick in." I was like, "April, pass me the screwdriver from <laughs> yeah. from from upstairs." And then she like dropped it like boink. And she's you, like, "Oh." Be a flathead or a Phillips head would do that. You uh, just got screwed. I think there's a screw joke in this as well because he says it after he kills the guy, just yeah. like Jason X. You just got screwed. Um, what was the other? Um, uh, so machetes again. Mm-hmm. He ties machetes on a ceiling fan. Yeah. April, we already talked about <laughs> that. You already talked about that. Yeah. Oh, I guess I wasn't listening. I'm sorry. <laughs> I missed that part. <laughs> April just okay. loves killing spree so much. It's a great She's just movie. hyped up about it. Um, okay, so one thing we have to mention is the, the ending. The end of the movie. Okay, I mean, yeah. well, the ending was kind of funny. Um, where the <laughs> the zombies that talk like between a wall to our hero okay, for like ten saying, first minutes. First of all, they're zombies. <laughs> oh yeah, I thought it, we already mentioned zombies. <laughs> no. Okay, th- I was done with this movie. Yeah, you were point. done because like, where like, could this go? You just looked over. You guys were laughing, and I was just like, was, uh, my, I, I had no more patience for this yes. movie. Nothing is happening, and all of a sudden, it turns into this like Evil Dead zombie movie. Yeah, in the it, last it, so third. The, the movie is basically like a creep show short. Yeah, but it's like like twelve minutes of content stretched out Ooh. to like ninety minutes. It's set up like, that you think that like he's gonna get his comeuppance. Like but butter scraped over too much bread. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, the guy... It, the oh. end of the movie is weird because, number one, the zombies are real. Yeah, yeah see, yes. there's so many fantasies in this movie. We're just like, this is either going to be a dream or, like, it's just a fantasy that someone's having. No, it's real. And number two, Asbestos, who is the worst guy in the world, yeah. is suddenly, like, the hero of the film. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. And wait, I got a third one. That instead of the zombies being, like, unkillable, like, moaning machines, they're, like, a Democratic party. Party who have to take a vote about what to do with him. They discuss like <laughs> how and when they're going to kill him and his wife and his wife is home and like it's just like 
surprisingly cool. And then they play this ridiculous music that is like the graduation theme or something. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. It's very heartfelt. So at the end, Asbestos like uh, commits suicide Yeah, he, in an he, unsatisfying way. He promises the zombies that he's going to take his wife down to the mm-hmm. to living room and then cut her head off Kill with her. a hacksaw. So they can get off to it. And he's like, yeah, this is what you want. And then instead he cuts his own head off with a hacksaw. So like the pixies. <laughs> yeah, to the pi- it's basically like wave of mutilation. Yeah. Yeah. And then isn't like the one guy like, we're at peace now. Yeah, we're at peace. <laughs> and then they all slowly walk out of the house and go to the grave. And it's like wave of mutilation. <laughs> and the uh, uh, the grave uh, that one of them came out of is now a hole to hell. Yeah, they um, jump into this pit. There's and like then, red light coming out of it. And then I think like the wife looks over to like the couch where he was and it's just like a blood stain and his body is nowhere to be seen and then she goes out onto the uh to the front and whoa he pops out in very fast motion and yeah, it looks a like, shot that's way too long yeah like, with the camera roll credits yeah it's like yeah. Benny killing Hill. spree as i said it's very much the ending of carrie it's, oh the same, it's, a, it's the same thing i would love to see the movie that you watched april <laughs> it's a shot basically <laughs> through like, april's eyes april like jumped to her feet shakily the benadryl rushing through her veins oh. applauding and screaming throughout it like, give me more benadryl no I'm not, I'm not allowed to take benadryl anymore oh really okay <laughs> and then colin's like april no you've had enough and then april takes like a screwdriver she's like you're ready to get screwed no Colin. but the real thing at the end of this movie is see the okay so what happens is at the very end end of the credits um they play the songs for the movie and then um asbestos felt wraps the plot of the movie i was so glad we sat through the because i made a joke i'm like we don't got to watch all the credits guys well april mentioned like it, it was in the credits it, before credited to some something is like something rap rap yeah, yeah. and like, we're probably like killing spree rap and we were like wait what we haven't heard that and yet. we waited and it's right at the end of the mm-hmm. credits and it's like my name's asbestos and i'm here to say i killed my wife uh every day yeah and it's he just wraps it's the whole better plot. than that but like okay i great. thought that the trend of wrapping the plot was like a later 90 like when did that start uh it's in monster squad monster squad it's in fright night fright no okay so that's like late 80s for for fright night night. actually no fright night is not a rap it's fright night fright night it definitely was like around that time but like you know usually it's by talented rappers my name's fright night and i'm here to say i I love sucking blood but a sleep i I need i I need like a definitive a definitive list of every movie that has a rap where they where they because the, I think I was in like the original Fast and the Furious or something. No, the second one? I watched, Fast, Fast and the, the Furious. Furious. My name's Vin Diesel and I'm it, here I to say. I watched it recently. I like two race cars. I like race cars in the old school Okay, I, I, thought, I thought of another one that uh, Always Be My Baby. That has one in it. Although the character is always a rapper. Always Be My Baby. Yeah, that movie that Keanu Reeves is oh, in. Oh, but that's not like an ironic 80s rap. My that's name's Keanu Reeves. Reeves. No, and the character in the movie also raps as well. So it's not, yeah. he's like rapping about the movie. Though It's still, it was Keanu. <laughs> okay. I, I, I bet you there's a Wikipedia page for this. You know who else was rapping about the movie? Who? LL Cool J and Deep, Deep Blue. That's right. There's another one. Yeah. Deepest, Deepest Bluest. Bluest. Yeah. My hat is like a shark fin. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, the Fresh Prince rapped, but it was an unofficial one. His Freddy rap. Really? Yeah. You didn't know that? He did a Freddy You've no. never heard the Freddy rap? Yeah, I have actually. Yeah. Oh, it's coming back But to the me. Fat Boys, that is official. Oh, well, he also did like uh, he did Wild Wild West, uh, Men in Black. Oh, uh, we need to you watch know. Disorderlies. Speaking of the Fat Boys, <laughs> what is Disorderlies? That was the Fat Boys movie. Oh, I don't know. Okay, we do the Fat Boys movie, and then we also do the Jerky. The Jerky. Boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I knew oh. you were gonna say that. Oh. <laughs> Okay, we'll have uh, the um, boys, boys movie. movie. <laughs> and then we'll watch the then classic we'll watch French Le series, Le Boys. <laughs> and, then we'll, and then we'll talk about the boys' Amazon Prime. And then we'll watch that film, uh, The Boys from Brazil. <laughs> yeah, I hear that one is very funny. And also, uh, what My is it? dad loves that movie. And then throughout the... <laughs> he does? <laughs> yeah. Like, I love movies about cloning Hitler. I, I, I had no idea. I, like. I had no idea <laughs> that's what it was about. I, I thought it was about pilots. I don't know why he's rubbing his hands when he says it either. <laughs> yeah. What am I doing? I'm like, Simpsons voice. Hey, how's it going? That's crusty. That's like, yeah. <laughs> Your dad is crusty the clown. Uh, uh, oh, the boys, I got all. Oh, yeah. And we're going to play throughout The Boys Are Back in Town. Yes. The Boys yeah. Are Back in Town. That'll be, I'll change the theme song for that. Oh, yeah, it's going to be great. the All Boys episode. All right. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, well, Jason X is available everywhere. It's a very popular movie. <laughs> I gotta I say, the, uh, the transfer rewatch was really good. Uh, uh, well, uh, it was not like Blu-ray quality or anything, but like... I, I, no, it, it's... It was Blu-ray quality? Yeah. You're saying it was a 4K? No, it's... <laughs> Blu-ray's not 4K. Oh. It's HD, and because it was scanned digitally, they've already had a you know, mm. got a digital cut of it. But it was it was very very pristine. Yeah, I mean, I would <laughs> not that I that's going to help the movie. I but. wouldn't recommend it, but I can see why people like it. I used to have a copy of Jason X signed by its, the director, Jim Isaac. I did because oh. I went to go see the premiere of Pig Hunt, the film that he directed at the Fantasia Film Festival. Pig, Pig Hunt. Yeah, it, Pig Hunt. It's about a giant boar that attacks people. And at that time, when I would go to film festivals. I would get my ticket and anything that the people made signed, no matter what it was. Really? Yep. Did he do that before uh, Jason X? He did X? it after, like way after so Jason X. So before Skinwalkers or after Yes, that? before Skinwalkers. Oh. Or maybe after. Skinwalkers is another one that sat on a shelf for a million years mm. as well, so who knows? And Killing Spree, how can people buy that? Has that been released by a company? Yes. <laughs> Just out in the world, this game. It was actually recently released by um, SRC... Uh, is it entertainment um, in a Blu-ray package limited to six 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 copies? Wow! It's a soon as special edition with a ninety-minute making of called <laughs> "Blinded by Blood," a oh, documentary. I'm gonna watch that. Three commentary tracks and the director's cut, which is fifteen minutes longer. Uh, See, I kind of wish we saw that now. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. This is one of those movies. What is it like? Ninety minutes? It's like ninety minutes. Yeah. It feels like two hours. Yeah. We'll do a director's cut episode. We'll watch the director's cut of Killing Spree and the director's cut of Boarding House. Which is three and a half hours <laughs> oh, long. Three and a half boring hours. Boring house. <laughs> How is there that much movie in that movie? There was barely enough. More in like regular boring. Car. How oh. is this movie three and a half hours? Whoa. Redux. Um, so if you'd like to email us, uh, we're at uh, no such thing as a bad movie at gmail.com. And uh, feel free to send us uh, recommendations or uh, reviews. Rate and review us on iTunes. We haven't gotten uh, a review on there for a while. It helps promote the podcast. Also, uh, if you want to support us on Patreon, uh, we have a $2 level where you can be submitted for a draw to pick a bad movie. Or at the $5 level, we have an episode every two weeks. And the most recent one, we had a little discussion with our uh, friend and special guest, Jim Maxwell. That's me. <laughs> uh, where him and Colin. Uh, You're just Justin with a beard. <laughs> where, 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 where'd Justin go? Jim's back. You took the hair on your head and, and made a beard out of it. <laughs> yeah, that's um, what I took do. that fake beard away. Uh, but yeah, they uh, they talk for about half an hour about uh, how they met in VFX and a couple of movies that they worked on. If you're interested, uh, it's a nice little uh, interview. And uh, we're also on Twitter at No Such Thing Pod. And I'm on Twitter at April Amansky. And I'm on Twitter at Jim Maxwell at Twitter. Sorry, <clears throat> I'm on Twitter at Jim <laughs> Maxwell. No, uh, it's DeClue, J D E C L O U X and letter J, or on Letterbox, Justin DeClue. See what I'm watching. Way too many movies. Oh, and I'm on Twitter at uh, Sergeant Zima S G T Z I M A. That's it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's it for this week. Uh, great movies, you guys. Uh, no, one great movie and one terrible movie. <laughs> you know what? Just uh, some vodkas and all the movies are great. <laughs> Killing spree. Check April it out. An unreliable narrator. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the usual suspects. Yeah. It's like she's just looking around the room. <laughs> <laughs> I just got posters everywhere. On the, it just asbestos. says asbestos. She looks down at the ground. Asbestos. Fell. It no, just says great. It just says great movie. I was saying asbestos is like a drag queen name except it's not as clever you know because oh, they're is. always yeah. puns mm-hmm. like yeah. uh miss cracker's name was originally brianna cracker like brie on a cracker oh. it's not so great asbestos felt not as good <laughs> no. uh so uh, i'm asbestos felt i mean i'm april Edmansky. i'm justin glue and i'm colin cunningham you know why he called himself asbestos felt asbestos because, because once it gets into you and it's and it's gonna and it's gonna cause you cancer and you're gonna die. And there's dark no, ending. There's no such thing as a bad movie. Woo.